Bonjour, je suis Not Manly, et ici le cours d'espace, je ne sais quoi. Hello, Not Manly here. Welcome back to part 8 of the Je ne sais quoi space race. This is our second small moon orbiter probe. We're just going to leave this up here because the first probe did accomplish its mission of colliding with the moon, but this one did not have enough delta V. But to get ready for our crewed missions up to the moon, we're going to send up Valentina Kerman with a Probodobodyne uh, Octo, a pair of docking ports, and we're going to go accomplish the first docking contract, the first docking milestone. i got to figure out why these craft are not all that stable. There we go. Maybe a little less wing authority will help with controlling this craft. Now that Valentina is an experienced orbital pilot, she can launch these things and keep prograde hold, making for very efficient launches where all we have to do is use the throttle to steer. At least as long as we get the first part of the gravity turn right. If we don't get it right, there's a very sharp turn once we uh, get past one kilopascal of air there and we go uh, orbit prograde instead of surface prograde. Anyway, turns out that this particular gravity turn wasn't as efficient as I'd have liked, but that's okay. As long as we have enough delta V in this stage, we should be able to close our orbit and uh, be able to do our docking tests. There we go. We don't quite have the level 3 tracking station yet, so we don't have a Kerbal Engineer readout set right now, but that's okay. We've got the stock ones built into KSP 1.7. There we go, we're just gonna, we're gonna decouple that, and we gotta make sure we get that back because, hey, our way home is attached to the other part, that's that parachute. So, come on. Val, make sure you get back attached to this damned thing so that we can bring you back home safe, otherwise we're gonna have to have you bail out of the capsule after re-entry. Now I've got the stock docking contract up there, and I also have the milestone contract up there. Docking is pretty easy when you have RCS thruster packs. Just gotta watch out, make sure you turn off, yaw, pitch, and roll. Let the reaction wheels do that, and just use this for uh, lateral controls, and going forward and back. You can do that. Docking is very, very easy. Literally point and shoot. Hopefully with a little more, little more pointing and a lot less shooting. I could have translated up a little bit there, but hey, I'm just being lazy. These docking ports have magnets. There we go. That completed uh, the milestone, but it did not complete the stock contract. We'll have to fix that uh, later on. I thought, well, I wonder if the craft just gets out of physics range. Will that be enough to be able to do the docking uh, contract? So we just play spin the bottle here. We'll see if we can separate out this craft here, give it some distance. Just one little problem. Uh, I... <laughs> well, you'll see in just a moment. There you go. Periapsis is now a good 10 kilometers into the atmosphere. Uh, and that's our way home. We got to go get that thing back. <laughs> Come on, Val. Go back and get that uh, module so that we can bring you back home safe. There we go. Now we're reattached, we can deorbit this craft, and we can bring Val back home safe. At least we, I think we can. And she is an experienced pilot, she can now do retrograde hold. But I found out that if I turned off SAS, whoops, uh, the craft is a little nose heavy. That's not good, that means it'd be entering way too fast, there we go, retrograde hold. We're going to have to watch that in future designs of our craft. Make sure we don't overload the top capsules of these things. Even though but this craft does seem a little heavy yet. There we go, descending speed. Oh, 8 meters per second. Let's lose some mass. Let's drop the heat shield. Uh, I did say drop the heat shield. Oh, Val, get out of the way of the heat shield. Look out, look out. Uh, bonk. Uh, okay. <laughs> ah, the magic of Ferrum Aerospace. We've got a frisbee on our hands. Well, okay, we'll just have to stay, stay clear of that thing. And well, I'm not comfortable with how fast we're going, so we're going to have Val here, here uh, bail out. We need to get the helmet back on there, otherwise the parachute won't reappear. There it is. I don't know if the parachute works with the backpack off. I'll have to try that at some point. But here, let go and deploy the chute. There we go. At least we know Val will get back safe. I don't know about uh, that pod. 
After little putzing around in the air for a while, and the pod does splash down safe. I just did not know if it was going to. Well, that's okay. We'll bring Val here, have her splash down, and go for a little swim. Could have done a little better on that approach, but that's okay. As part of astronaut training, you have to be good in the water. If you were to check out uh, Jeremy's uh, video over at the Canadian Space Agency channel, he'll explain why you need to be a good swimmer to be a good astronaut. Anyway, we're sending up a little stronger craft to try to land uh, an uncrewed probe on the surface of the moon. We got a little more fuel in those side boosters, and we're using more efficient engines. We went back to the pair of Twitch engines, which are lighter and are just a little less efficient, but that's okay. We're not going to be bringing up so much mass. At the same time, I did this during a live stream over at the Discord, and that's Kerbal Core and I, the fellow from the Lathe Initiative, uh, gabbing away there. That's why I have this ascent muted right now, because it would have been good to have his conversation in on this as well as mine, but for some reason it wouldn't record my voice, and it would seem like a rather one-sided conversation if I kept the audio in there. So, well, that, well, well we just mute this and... And we'll get this craft on its way to the moon by first closing its orbit here. And Kerbal Core rightly pointed out that, whoops, uh, I need to nose up a bit there. <laughs> We've already passed Apoapsis. Come on, let's get this thing back on course. There we go, we get time to AP as positive again, and we'll be able to finish closing this craft's orbit. The problem is, I still didn't have enough Delta V to land, so I wound up using the rest of the stage to do the ejection out to the moon. That does mean that that craft will be stuck in orbit as space junk, but uh, we'll see about bringing it back. As long as we don't do anything silly like try to blow it up and scatter even more junk in space. At least we can track a single piece. There we go, we're trying to line this up. Okay, there we go. Not bad and we'll have plenty of Delta V to land. In the meantime, we're going to finish upgrading the rest of the Space Center. The Research and Development Center is almost done. There it is, done. The tracking station is also almost done. I didn't know it at the time, but as we upgrade buildings, our capacity to get more contracts uh, increases. So with R&D and the tracking station finished, we were able to pick up some more contracts. In the meantime, we're going to complete the stock uh, docking contract. We're sending Julie out here for a little bit of science dancing and Roberta in an identical craft. And we're just going to dock these two nose to nose on the ground because the contract says on or around Kerbin. And this counts as being on Kerbin. Not bad, not bad at all. There we go. Come on, close that. Yes, a vessel handshake. Okay, so that particular Explorer Kerbin contract is done. We end up driving this thing back up to the launch pad to recover it for full funds, and we'll be able to use it later. In the meantime, our first uh, lander that didn't have enough Delta V, we're going to put to good use by looking for anomalies on the surface of the moon. I believe there are six unique anomalies, five standard ones, and one randolith. Just like on the stock moon. There we go, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, launch our first space station. That is one of the next milestones available now that we got the docking contract done. done. But as soon as we complete those landing contracts, we'll be able to get crewed missions out to the moon and to Minmus. And speaking of Minmus, uh, the first of our smaller probes has finally made it out to Minmus. Now I gotta be careful here because we end up in Minmus' shadow for a bit, so we lose contact with Kerbin for a moment. But that's okay, our maneuver node is on the other side of Minmus, and we should be able to get signal from Kerbin right there. We're just a little late getting that burn started, but that's okay, this is Minmus. It did not require that much Delta V to close our orbit. And this craft actually has enough Delta V to safely land. But to complete the Orbit Minmus contract, we need to transmit some science. And we had to turn the uh, allow partial on so we could send it up because we don't have any batteries on this craft. We had to rely on what was built into the Octo. But that's okay. We did get that Orbit. Plus we got the stock uh, story contract, Orbit Minmus. 
At day 64, we completed that. Now, I thought about trying to land this thing near one of the anomalies, but uh, no. I wasn't anywhere near that, and even if I was able to do it, it was on the dark side and we wouldn't have been able to see it very well. That's okay, we'll be able to catch it with the other craft, with any luck. In the meantime, we'll try to land this craft right here. There we go, Suicide Burn Delta V is 70 meters per second, and we have over 190. We should not have a problem landing this thing safe. That will complete the uncrewed landing on Minmus as soon as we touch down. There we go, and with the tracking station finished, we now have Kerbal Engineer readouts, uh, even when we don't have a Kerbal Engineer module installed. Not bad, not bad at all. There we go, we'll just kind of lie this flat on one solar panel, we'll leave the other one exposed to the sun. And then we'll transmit some science, Ooh, but take a look. Impact! Okay, I suppose we impacted Minmus at like less than a meter per second, but we did it. <laughs> but we have landed on the surface of Minmus, and we're about to transmit some science to complete the uncrewed land on Minmus milestone. Again, on day 65. Just a little a bit into day 65. And there we go. Seven science. We have completed milestone number 22. Not bad. Not bad at all. Yes, we know it's possible to land a craft. And now with all of those basic uh, uncrewed landings done, we should have access to the crewed uh, landings. Or at least crewed orbits or something. We're a little shy on science to get the next node, but that's okay. We have a probe sitting on the surface of Minmus. We'll quickly get some pressure science, even if we're not going to be able to get all of it. We'll get something. Okay, and there we go. Hey, okay. little bits of science. Now we can get the Mark II pod, finally. We need that if we're going to send more than one Kerbal into space. Now look at what we got available now. First crewed orbit of Minmus. Notice it does not say first crewed landing of Minmus. We have to send a craft up to orbit and then bring them back home safe, not try to land them yet. In the meantime, our Moon Lander 2 is on its approach to the moon. And this craft has Delta V to spare. We should not have a problem landing this thing safe. In fact, once we get this thing into orbit, we're going to try to land near one of the anomalies that the Moon Lander 1 had found. In fact, hey, that one right there sitting on the equator. Let's go for that one. There it is. And again, Kerbal Engineer is available to us. This one has a Kerbal Engineer module on it, but uh, we didn't need it. Now that we have the level 3 tracking station, that's okay. We are almost on the surface of the moon. Suicide Delta V is just under 700 meters per second, and we have Delta V and thrust to wait to spare. Still, though, this is the moon. It's a little harder to land on than Minmus because the gravity is just a little stronger. Look at that. We've got that object that we found earlier. It looks like uh, one of the moon arches. Yep, that's one of the stock moon arches from the original game, preserved in the Je ne sais quoi version of the moon. Let's see how close we can land to this thing. There we go. We have that marker on the ground there from Kerbal Engineer. We should be able to... Oh, there it is. It's barely visible, but it is there. We're just trying to adjust it behind the arch because we're going to end up landing in front of it because we're going to be thrusting for our lives to land safely. This craft does not really need any landing gear. That fuel tank is nice and flat and the twitch engines are mounted on the sides. So we should be able to lay this craft flat on its bottom when we do hit the surface. Hopefully not hit the surface too hard. We've already done that. We just want to land on the moon now. There we go. That ridge looks like a pretty safe place to land. Yeah, we'll take that.
If you notice up on the messages column, we do get acknowledgement for finding the arch. We'll show that in just a moment after we touch down. Look at that. An effortless landing for this probe. Again, I do have some small reaction wheels tucked in the nose cone of this craft. That is why we seem to have reaction wheels with the Rovemate, which does not normally have reaction wheels. It does, however, have SAS. There we go. Let's try for a nice gentle landing. We've got Delta V to spare. Come on. Is this that seven minutes of terror that they were talking about? We are in full contact with the craft. Come on. Where's the shadow? Where's the shadow? There's the shadow. Come on. Just a little more. Touchdown. We are safely landed on the surface of the moon. We'll turn SAS off. We'll let it fall on its flat. There we go. That craft's not going anywhere now. It's nice and safe right by the moon arch. Look at that. We have discovered a rock arch on the moon. Come on, we gotta close that. Now that we're landed, though, we gotta pick up some science and transmit. Come on. Transmit. There we go. Complete. We've just landed on the moon. That is milestone number 23 on day 66. While we're here, let's go pick up some pressure data. Every little bit of science helps. What are we waiting for? There we go. We're waiting for the battery to recharge. The Rovermate has pretty impressive batteries. There we go. Yes, we can land people safely on the moon. Here's an updated progress chart of our competitors. I updated the info for the Lathe Initiative and the Zawardo Space Agency. Uh, Zawarudo, that's very impressive still. Uh, five milestones on day one. Lathe Initiative finished on day 86. Still very impressive. And Notebook finished on day 100. We still have some folks to catch up though. Photon is still missing and the DNRA needs to catch up. Hopefully they will soon, but until then. I'm not manly, fly safe!